Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time to look at the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kende Wandu, as a chartered arbitrator in the UK. Good morning, Chris. Thank you for joining us. Yes, yeah, so I'm here. Good morning. You really Good look morning. like a barrister this morning. <laughs> Good morning to you, Chris. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Okay, so we'll be starting with the punch, and the punch leads with federal government governors reach three-month agreement on local government allocations. Um, the, gov the writers here says government worried about 1990 era, um, yeah, 1990 era when local government couldn't pay teachers workers salaries and that has been said by the official well there's a lot that's been happening with the local government especially with the autonomy of the local government before now it was said that um, the state governors were the ones that you know ruled the affairs of the local government you know had the money disbursed it how they wanted but now we're seeing where the local governments will have their own financial autonomy and then they're getting um, allocations as well so what do you think about this now that the government is worried, saying at some point the local government could not pay workers? Is that going to be a repeat of this? Because some people are saying that it can be, it, there can be an abuse of power with the local governments. Well, in the period we are talking about, uh, there was no, uh, we didn't have government agencies uh, like EFC and ICPC then. Mm. Um, now, if you understand what I mean, uh, but now we have graft agencies like SCPC and uh, the uh, EFCC and even NFIU, as it were. And um, so the local government will be on serious scrutiny of the graft agencies. Uh, because they are going to be direct allocations and um, whatever is allocated to the local government will be known to everybody. And, um, and I want to let me use this opportunity to say that in the past, we used to find the way to see where allocation to state we are publishing national newspapers. They have stopped doing that for whatever various reasons. Now, I think we should be able to resume that and call for that. That is the job of NGOs and um, to call for that so that we know what comes to each local government, just like each state. Mm -hmm. And that can be tracked. So local government chairman will be held accountable, irrespective of whatever happens. So I think it was a different board game in time. And um, the AGF um, has come out to say that any local government chairman that misuse uh, his place uh, uh, allocations went to it, be dead. Just like, and you know, the beauty of it is that unlike governors, local government chairmen don't have any minutes. You can be arrested at any given time and prosecuted for any wrongdoing. So if, uh, for whatever reason, if their governors are trying to prefer the uh, amount allocated to local communities for now for them to cry out and say and say it as it were. But to be difficult to do because all these local government chairmen are just to do a siege of the governors because they are the ones that pick them and appoint them. So uh, it's either you want to be on the side of the people or you ship out. But the local government autonomy is what we are uh, clamoring for. There will be no reason why no local government cannot be able to function and is supposed to do function as established in the 1999 constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You know, you have three tiers. We have the federal government, we have the state government, and we have local government. And there are uh, areas that are located to local government, things they are ought to do, market, primary, especially primary school, because that is where the problem has always been. Local government, because local government uh, uh, are finding it difficult to pay salaries of um, primary school teachers, then that was why it was taken over by the, exclusively by given by the state government uh, governors to take up the responsibility and also prefer this monument. But now, all those local small, small roads within my village, it is the job of the local government and um, other, other roads that have been assigned to them. So nobody will have any, any excuses uh, within the local government to not be able to deliver on the promises that they've been to. That's my personal opinion. Some of the papers, but uh, we also have information that uh, the local government uh, executives are to take two, uh, four years tenure yeah. as well. Do you think it will help in accountability and uh, uh, and uh, this autonomy that we are talking about, knowing that they ha they can serve up to four years uh, without any problems? Yes, if we can stop the issue of uh, appointing technical committees and making sure that all government 
Um, and the employment and I acted like uh, the governor as well. I don't have any problem with him for years. After all, the president came for years, the governor from the Scotland government from getting for years. But the problem is that although the Supreme Court by had uh, uh, abolished the issue of the caretaker committees, and uh, the only idea that I personally still don't think is necessary is the clamor for I need to conduct in local government education. If there are more uh, better ways of um, creating way of getting this uh, making this election possible, fine. Because the idea that you say what you get in public, so it's starting with so much responsibility. Ask yourself, the, the national and the state uh, election that I know conducted, how we have they covered themselves uh, in good group as it were? Uh, uh, they, they are lacking. Uh, we saw what happened during the last election, both at the presidential and national assembly election, even the governorship elections. We see that close to about 75 to 80 percent of elections conducted by INEC is always end up at the tribunal, or uh, yes, at the tribunal or courts. And at the end of it, uh, most of them are known. Then you come to ask yourself, what is the place of INEC as an unbiased um, uh, arbitrator when it comes to um, elections? So, but I don't see anything. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. So if there's we are going to tenure, uh, tenure period, then I think we should be aligned with what we have at the general election. The time we have in the other, we have it during the time of the general election, we have president, the presidential election, a governorship election. That we also have to look at some this apart. But I don't find it, I don't see any problem. But as I've said, the problem with the state election, the, the local government election, is the state independent electoral and commission, which are practically under the, the ambit of the, uh, of the governors. There is no state in Nigeria where you see the local government election is conducted without the ruling party in the state having 100% of that election. That, that, that is a sign of worry for me because that means that, are you saying that there are no other political party in that state? No, it's not definitely not possible. Something is wrong somewhere. Mm. All right, so another story here on the punch says protest, inflation, top as Council of State meets today. Um, with the protest that happened a few days ago, do you think that now they understand the severity of things? Maybe before they did not really understand what people are going through, but now um, they kind of do, whereby this is top priority. And do you think we'll be seeing any changes with the state of the economy anytime soon? Well, if there's anything that the protests have achieved, it is bringing to the fore the agitation by Nigerians to bring to our government both at the federal and state level, that uh, as you say, Lagos Palace, that a new power mm. under the kilos. So, <laughs> so oh, a new power. If the government, through their spokespersons or uh, the president, through his state, are not telling him the truth, because most of them are not, you see that these states are just psychopaths who just to tell the president or the governors as it were what they want to hear. And that is why I always question most of this is uh, that um, appointed by the president, by governors. They are just yes. All they do is to just um, coin the ego of the president and just tell him what he wants to hear rather just um, putting him in the room because they think that if they say the truth, then their job is at stake. But um, the, if the president hadn't heard before, hadn't seen, the protests are brought to the fore that Nigerians are hungry. And he said in his broadcast uh, that uh, he has had them loud and clear. Mm -hmm. But to me, that broadcast was a total waste of time. Uh, the president didn't use it to address the basic issues, which was the agitation uh, in terms of hunger by Nigerians. He was talking about his achievements and what he has done in the past one year. Yes, not much as telling us what you have done in the past one year. The basic question is that how has that improved the life of Nigeria? How has that brought um, cash in my pocket? How has that improved the price of rice, beans, gari, uh, whatever, apple, or whatever it is, food item, which is what Nigerians are crying. Nigerians are not talking about you. Maybe they see any buses, or that the economy has grown, or that your students grow. Um, uh, those are not the issue. But the basic issue, as far as Nigerians are concerned, that they are hungry. They are able to bring down the cost of, of food because a hungry man is an angry man as it is. So, those are the issues for me. And uh, so, for that, that protest uh, uh, achieved its aim. The only aspect of it I didn't like, uh, which was part of the problem uh, issues raised by security leaders and some other individuals, is being hijacked by certain individuals. They are said to be seen to be looking going on that went on in this north. 
But that in itself also brought us some fundamental issues, which is the level of poverty in the north. Until the leaders in the north rise up education and tackle this issue um, squarely, they are sitting like time bomb. Because from what I saw during that protest, it's so obvious that uh, it's still like far, far better in the south than in the north. And it's not just done about this, the poverty level in the north, the out of school children in the north. Uh, there are majority system in the north, then sooner than later something is going to be. Um, and I, I, I continue to say that, in the fact that the protests have uh, come down, and uh, the government, government said that they don't know who's behind it, although they, most of them came out to say we are behind it. If we say that the protests have been emitted in the court, all well and good, but that the agitations will continue. Government has not or did not address those issues raised during the protests, I mean, you can rest assured that the next one will be very organic, that there will not be, there will not be change this one that they gave notice. That one might just be a total um, organic protest that the government might not be able to. So I hope that as the means, at the federal government means, and even at the, some, uh, the regional level of the state, let them address the issue of poverty in the land and hunger. Um, if that is not addressed, then that we still have no problem. Before us. Okay, Chris, I've heard you loud and clear. Since you said that the president. <laughs> the president, 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 the 30 CNG mm. buses. That's almost one year after the promise was made at COP19, COP28. 28. Uh, last year it started in November, I think November 30th to December, um, maybe 13th or so. So he has commissioned 30 now for the entire Nigeria. So if we are to give one to a state, it Some will states be, will probably not yeah, have. It will be, uh, okay, we'll have only 13, uh, 30 states. Mm -hmm. uh, that means 60. Uh, six, six other states, states will not have, have it at the federal um, capital yeah. territory. So this is where we are now. But do you think this is the beginning of uh, uh, promises fulfilled? I don't know if you are clear about the CNG buses that are speaking in the federal government over one year to be able to achieve after the president promised that. But if you say it's just here, I mean, I have provided CNG buses in over seven months now or eight months. If you are if you are within this the link um, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway as is, and I'm talking from Mure, uh, Mure Ibapo down to Bega, even to Adota, you will see large CNG buses put by the uh, state government. The other thing, so I've seen it, I've seen it with my colleague. In fact, I didn't know it was uh, the state until I started making it. I've heard it one myself, so I'm, I can't yes. say that authoritatively. Yeah. Yes, you would have seen it. You would not see these buses have been operated. So I don't know the big deal about President coming out to launch that process. These are promises that have been made. And I've said it time and time remember that that is not the problem. That is not the solution to the problem. The solution to the problem is that we have to get into agriculture. Not only so many people cannot even afford to enter those buses as that. So many Nigerians are trekking now. And it's a fact. They cannot fit. So many Nigerians cannot fit. Where I think we should be able to channel our attention now is making sure that food flood the market, either way through importation or making sure that um, we produce more and providing security for farmers. Because part of the problem is that farms cannot even go to the farm. And that is a fact. And our security agents have been telling us, oh, things have been put, oh, everywhere is okay. Just a few days ago, over 30 people were killed in, uh, is it not Benue State or so? Over 30 people were killed in Benue State. And the same thing is going on in. I know Benin is the um, food basket of nation. So we have to channel our effort on making sure that we produce enough at a short. What we need now is what we call short term, medium term, and long term solution to some of this problem, and especially especially in the area of food. And that is where I think is so good. CIG buses, well, all well and good. But how many buses do we have? How many we with Lagos alone? If we put five thousand buses in Lagos alone, five thousand buses. It will not solve the transportation problem in the stockless of the whole of Nigeria that we are launching. The government promise, and I hope that it's not just say, ah, okay, we have promised you possibly. I see the boss, we are commissioning it, and there are so much fanfare about it. Uh, I said earlier on, there is no big deal about what the government is doing with CNG buses. Ogun State, that I have seen with my own Koroko eye, have been running CNG buses um, uh, at a very, very reduced prices for 
people of Ubu State. I, I, just, I can't tell you. Well, the good thing, the good thing is, from that story, the good thing from that yeah. story is that these buses were produced locally by yeah, locally Innocent made. Motors. So I loved that fact. And if it's going to continue and all the ones that we're going to have will be produced locally, that means employment, that means more money to us and all that. So I, that's the good thing I took out of it. But like I said, I've bought one of these buses. Uh, not once, not twice. I bought buses anyway. <laughs> so yesterday... Uh, they had to, I, what I noticed was that the people who are even hanging on the buses, so to speak, are just like the, the trains in India oh, that carry people more outside than the ones that are inside. That's what is happening because it is relatively cheap. And then they had to go to a filling station or a gas station somewhere in Ogun State, close to Ibafo, and their excuse was that in the whole of Lagos that they go to from Ogun State, there is no gas station that they can refuel as it is. So if we are bringing CNG buses, where are they going to be refueling? Where are they going to be uh, getting the gas from and all that? I understand it's quite cheap. I think a, a kg is 300 or 200 naira. It's quite cheap. So uh, that is that much is good. But how much are we prepared to even take on these uh, CNG buses and make life better for ourselves? It's a question that we'll, we keep asking ourselves, and I don't know what the answer will be to that. Well, I don't know what the answer will be, but the fact remains that if it comes to gas, we have the highest, one of the highest uh, uh, depo deposits of gas in the whole entire world. Our gas deposit is very, very, very high, very, very, very high, uh, and it's top notch. Um, some of the best in the world. So it's for us to be able to harness it. And as rightly said, uh, we are going, people going to recharge um, these uh, CNG buses. Uh, it was like what happened some few, <laughs> some few months back, where I saw a Tesla car breaking down on Todd Mainland Bridge. You know what a Tesla car is? And I saw. You see those Tesla car where they use electric. So I asked. As I was just driving past with my K2K2, -K2, I saw a Tesla car breaking down in front, uh, on top of uh, top Midland Bridge. And as I was a towing van, trying to tow it and um, raising it up and towing it. And so it may be say, the man has seen it before he comes out, you know, if you can never not get like, you know, the generator no work. So you don't charge the car well. So the, the car, finally, when they go to Midland Bridge, no electricity to power it. But that's on the light um, movement. I hope. Uh, the government said that they're establishing um, um, most of these um, gas stations across. I think it goes beyond just the government. What the government should do is give the enabling environment so that we can also have private individuals um, queuing into this. Just like you have private, uh, what do you call it yet, independent marketers as, um, uh, as um, filling stations. That's why you have, um, apart from having NMPC, you see that you have. Um, Private companies, the Mobi, the Total, and the rest of them, those are private individuals or private companies. So it is not just about the government established, because how many will they, be, will they be able to establish? They said about three in each state. When you say about three in each state presently, as it were, how many people are going to be able to go there to be able to get it? So we need to flood, make sure that we have as many uh, rechargeable uh, areas for the CNG gases. Um, before we can fully go into that. But it's something I had, I don't know how true it is. I was reading somewhere that those buses run, can run on both CNG and also diesel. I don't know how true it is. If it, that is the case, then all well and good. Because it means that uh, if you get to a point that you don't even get gas, you can as well just switch back yeah, to diesel, it, it which is even the much, much more expensive uh, it's version of it. It's even, this is more expensive than even uh, petroleum. I talked with a commercial bus driver about it and he had CNG on his bus, the one of these yellow buses, and he said, he showed me a, a switch that you could mm. just switch easily to gas or to, to petrol. So that much is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I had, I had somewhere, I don't have to, I've never used it. It's true. It's all well and good, but we need to be able to pump up as much. You know, there used to be this, I don't know which of the government did the mass transit started the mass transit um, buses in those days. I don't know whether it was Jonathan or I don't know who it was. But it was really heavy. It was really heavy. If you come to Lagos and see the number of those mass transit buses, they were practically everywhere. The alternative is if you cannot get a bus, you just take the mass transit. And it was working. And I saw it so many places in Abuja and all this. So, but the way it is, the fact remains that we will have the capacity. 
in this con in this time that we have limited funds, when the question you ask yourself, where are we going to get money to flood the market with uh, this? And that is why we have for let's say time and time. Personally, personally, the, 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 the decision by the government to remove the subsidy uh, on petroleum was too hasty. Um, that is what has gotten us where we are. And that is not true, it's not too late for us to go back to where we are coming from. If the report coming out is saying that we're already paying subsidy, uh, uh, you remember vividly that a few weeks ago, we said on this program that um, one of the people had also said that we are paying about 770 billion naira monthly on subsidy. Mm. The government have not come to debunk that. So what, who is fully food? Who? Hmm. Well, I think it's important that we have a transportation system that works. So we might not be able to flood the market with a lot of buses, but even the ones that we have, we can be able to utilize them. I don't think 30 buses, 30 CNG buses will make any difference, but let's just start from there. Um, there's a story here on the Daily Trust. Like, this was one of our top trending stories this morning, and it says police trailed Sudan crisis mastermind to Labour House, and that is by the IG of police, Kayode Egbetoko. Um, so they had said that this man was the mastermind of the uh, Sudan, Sudan crisis, and he had moved to a shop in the headquarters for, of the labor um, union. However, they trailed him there to arrest him. Um, I don't know how they carted away with some vital documents, but do you th what's your comment on this? Do you think this is just an excuse or just something they're saying to, um, to sweep what had happened with the, the labor union saying that their headquarters was invaded by the government officials? I have no problem with Secretary Justice um, doing their job and trying to um, arrest those that they term as a um, security risk, as it were. I have no problem with that. That is their, that is, uh, their right. That is um, what the, uh, the Constitution has given them to be able to deal with issues of internal security. But my problem is that when the police did this, they did not come out clean to state that they did it until NLC uh, started raising the other shout. Remember immediately when this news first broke, it, all over the media it was said that it was DSS. And that is why I always pity the DSS. Because if anything happens, uh, any of this issue happens, the first thing that happens DSS. is uh, is to point accusing fingers uh, at DSS. Because the security agencies in, you know, don't come out clean. And people are accusing, accusing um, it was said that um, it was DSS that raided um, uh, the neighbor house. And um, until DSS came out to say, no, we're not the one, we're not part of that. It was then that police uh, finally came out to say, oh, yes, we did. We went there and we are tracing. Uh, so that even goes to show that the police don't know because at that time, the person that are looking for them arrested. Them. That means they don't even have the intel that they needed. Because if you have the intel, you would have followed through and make sure that you would have traced the person you are looking for, making sure that he is at that facility at the time you are going to arrest him. And you pick him up. Not going in the middle of the night when they close the place and uh, and the same thing happened. You remember when the, the, the uh, was it the editor of, was it First News or was that uh, the newspaper? I think it was First News. That young man, the editor, was picked up. And for days, um, the DSS was, being, was accused of being, the, uh, being behind it. And until the DSS came out also to say, no, we are not the one. It was finally that he was finally traced um, to the facilities of the military. So uh, I think that um, I believe that our security agency, social the Nigerian police, should be able to come out clean on issues like this, so that there is no level of suspicion. And that is why I've always said that there must not be a disconnect between the people and our security agency, especially police, so that people can volunteer uh, information. Every security agency across the world work through intelligence and collaboration with the state. If you have got the kind of intel you need, you would have been able to penetrate that place and be able to get the information you need so as to be able to pick up the person you want to pick. Not that going around, you, are, you don't even know where you, you went from downstairs, you went to the second floor, and you are going around breaking the down. To me, for now, I don't think they, the police have done the act. They, what they need to is to, to, to apologize to NLC and also uh, own up to the fact that uh, they were able to follow this. Until I see the person they say they are looking, um, looking for, then it is very difficult for me to be able to testify the fact that IGPS they came out to give reason why they have to move into the
uh, into labor uh, mouse as it were. But, but, but will it be out of place, Chris, uh, by law, to inform the people whose house you are going to raid because of a suspect? Or is it that the police does not trust anybody in labor because With they could have informed, even, yes. even if it's the president of NLC or anybody high up there that we were coming into your house, this is the intelligence we have. Is it out of place just because it's security? There are two ways to it. Before the police can, can search your house, it is a court warrant. The police, for whatever reason, need a court warrant to come into your house and search your house, and they come to the arm with that court warrant. Uh, most often than not, but there are instances where, if they believe that there are serious threats to national security or security, they might not just give you the information um, that they want to come out. They might just decide to come. It is their job, and um, so uh, it's a two way team, as far well as I'm concerned. On this particular matter, I feel that the police could have done the need for that. Is why I said. If there's any level of suspicion, then they are intel, they're supposed to work on their intel properly and make sure that what they are looking for, who they are looking for, is at that point in time and you make sure that you just pick up the person and do whatever you want yeah. to do. But in such a way, you just try to go to the place at night to say you are having some suspicion and you wear masks and the rest of them. I don't know how that pans out. <laughs> but the police, the, the police have the right to be able to go to any place at any given point in time, if there's a thing that they say, they say, let me give you a critical example. If there's, you know of somebody that want to bomb a place or want to burn certain areas, and you know that those is ready to strike, you don't need to go, you, you don't want the police, you don't need a court warrant to go and tell the person, I'm coming to search your place. They move in immediately and try to leave it. But, but constitutionally, if you are, as a person, it's an accused, and the police want to come and arrest you, that is how to, when it comes to arrest, the police are supposed to come with a court warrant to be able to arrest you. Yeah, that is I what think, the law says. I, I think it has to do with the peculiarity of the of the case and the situation. In this particular one, I'm not sure yeah. there was a case. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, this is where we have to wrap mm -hmm. it up on this segment. Chris, we want to say thank you for coming. Always a pleasure reviewing the papers with you. Thank you so much. My people, my people. <laughs> have a wonderful day. <laughs> you too, sir. Have an amazing day. All right, so we're sticking with Chris Kende Wonder. He's a chartered arbitrator in the UK, and we've just been taking global stories that made it to our headlines this morning. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic that talks about the Edo State government. Please stay with us.